It's great to know that you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time now to review the headlines on uh, some of our national dailies. And to do that with us is Mr. Chris Kainde Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but here in Lagos. I hope you are in Lagos. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, my brother. No, I'm not in Lagos. I'm in Abiyokuta. Good morning. You are in Abiyokuta? Yes, uh -huh. the, the, yes, the National Conference of Nigeria Institute of Public Relations. Oh, okay, that's that's nice. So, that's nice. Yes. So okay, the, welcome to the program this morning. Uh, how you. is the conference going so far? Yes, it's fine. Today is the opening ceremony. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to be looking at some papers. Uh, and um, we're going to begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. And um, just give me a moment. Okay, so this morning we're beginning with the Punch newspaper, like I said. And the headline, uh, the, the, the leading headline there is No Nigerian Shopper, Chinese Im uh, Operator Risk Sanctions as Federal Government Shots Abuja Supermarket. Okay, so we have this story. And the writer is a uh, consumer agency plans Wednesday tribunal, says CCTV footage shows owner fled Monday morning. Federal government identifies fleeing operator and um, punch investigation reveals Lagos Indian school bars Nigerians as well. Okay, so your comment on that. Uh, well... This is no news because uh, this has been happening in so many parts of the country. Uh, we are national, foreign nationals come to our country and discriminate against our uh, our people. It's happened in Lagos several months back, and um, so um, this one uh, we were just uh, even not for the ego aisle of the uh, punch newspaper news and the investigation that won't happen of this. So, but the fact is that uh, the uh, good aspect of it is that. Um, the federal government and the authorities have taken uh, charge and they've come to the place to shut it down. Um, these are part of the discrimination that we face as Nigerians, uh, not only uh, outside our country, but also in our country. Uh, that is a, I don't know whether you've seen a trading video that is going on of a woman that was um, lifted in Nigeria and that was uh, lifted by Turkish airline. Mm. And um, that point herself, I'm sure it was absolutely like the government. And she was uh, elected from Nigeria and she was en route uh, going to another country by passing through Turkey. And um, the rule stated that once a flight is going to be delayed for more than 21 hours, uh, then they must find your accommodation in that country. And she got there. And every other national of that country, of other countries uh, were giving a hotel accommodation just at her and others because they are carrying a Nigerian passport. We are not given the accommodation and we are asked to sleep at the airport, stay at the airport for over 21 hours. You can imagine that, and that's the question. So, those are the kind of discrimination that we get from um, other nationals or other countries. But you can do that as a but in our country, you cannot. You cannot just set up a place and say it's exclusive for We are not in South Africa. During the apartheid regime, that was what happened in South Africa. Even in South Africa, it doesn't happen. Why would anybody set up this for marketing and clear answer? Yes, we know it's your money you is setting the top, but you cannot discriminate against any Nigerian or any foreigner for that matter. Not only Nigerian. Set up your place, so it's only Chinese. Those people that are working there are even Nigerians. So um, it's good that um, it has been shut down. And I think that if the owner of the place can be paid, then they should be prosecuted as a, as a deterrent to others of type that want to engage in that kind of nonsense uh, uh, activities in our country. Yeah, I was, I was saying the um, consumer protection has done so well, but I, I was also asking the question, what did they do uh, when uh, we had the case of the uh, uh, tomato, tomato review? Uh, the, cons the consumer was just left to her own mercy, and then the company, which is obviously bigger than her, was prosec prosecuting her, and she didn't have any support from the consumer protection. Will we just be looking at foreign nationals that are doing um, this uh, uh, this kind of thing, this appetite as you call it, and not and rem and forget about our own people who are suffering at the hands of service providers of any kind. 
Um, on the tomato, uh, I don't think that's a, a, a right night. I know that the agency uh, came into it. And um, in fact, they were the one that uh, it, uh, um, was able to secure bill for that they, they, they intervened. The former um, FCCPC or whatever they call their kind of population. I remember that, that man's name was Iruke or Iruke or whatever. I don't think you know this. Stay any longer. I know that he intervened. I read several uh, on social media. I heard that the DG or secretary secretary of that just intervened. Um, and the lady was initially released, but I don't know what happened thereafter because I think he has left an under present. But it is within the right of the consumer protection agencies to protect Nigeria, not just that of the, every, uh, 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 the rights of Nigerians to be protected when it comes to um, the issues of um, buying, buying and purchasing of goods and services. If it's only in Nigeria that you get to buy some and you are not satisfied and you don't have anywhere to report, even when you report, nobody is with it. Uh, you go and make purchases. Most often than not, even though the, the worst is those guys are online. You see what I said, what I saw, what I paid for, and you, when they send it to you, you see what you get. And nobody just do anything about it. And that is very, very important. That's why I don't ever buy. I've never bought anything online. I, I don't think I've ever done because the kind of rubbish that they, that goes on in that chain of business is not something that is acceptable to. So Nigeria have the right to be able to complain. I was talking about Turkish Turkish airline, or Turkey airline, what I What of Nigeria? When you go to the airport to buy a ticket to one fly, and for about three four hours you are left in the road, and they continue they, they continue um, um, what do they call it now postponing the flight or uh, what's that name they use, and you continue you remain in the airport for about four five hours and nothing does. In fact, it got to a point that you even have outright cancellation. Nobody tells you anything. And you just go home only to come back the next day, and it, it doesn't happen in other part of the, if it happened in any other part of. The, be compensated. But I've seen time and time again the Minister of Pressure come to say, oh, in whatever report you have about flight cancellation or much delay, you report to say, those reports have many. Until we start suing these people, until we start suing for our rights, we can never get it right. So I think this is where the protection agency comes in, this is where the judiciary also comes in. Nigerians must have a right to sue for inadequacies or not getting what they paid for or not getting the kind of service that they deserve. By so doing, all these people will sit up and make sure that they right. Mm. Well, when you talk about segregation, some of us who are in Banzet are also thinking it's segregation to say some people are worthy of having more light in Ban A, Ban B and all that. I, th I think that's internal segregation as well. But I don't know how you think. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I'm sorry. As, as I said, Total protection for consumers of goods and products in Nigeria, whether it's Banzi, whether it's this thing, whatever you deserve and you paid for, you must be able to get it. So um, that is what was supposed to be. And as an agency of government that started with that responsibility, what is that the Nigerians even have the uh, opportunity of reporting to that uh, agency? And even when they do, can they do, they do the right thing? Even when they do, can the judiciary be able to give you justice? Those are so when Nigerians look at all the processes, what is going to get you? Buy a product for 10,000 naira, and you don't get satisfaction, and you want to go to court, or you want to report, at the end of it, you are going to use another 1 million naira to prosecute that case. Not even knowing when the judgment will come there, because so that is why Nigeria does, that is why the producers of this product just go on as if nothing happened. Then continue, continue to take people responsible and put them responsible for their action. Then all these shenanigans will continue. Mm. But we're talking about the ban A, ban B, and all that. Uh, federal government to unbundle 11 discos, order sale of four. Do you think it's a solution? Let me get your comments. I don't know. The one that is sold, what came up of it? What came up out of it? That is a question you asked. Um, Nepa or PHDN was unbundled and sold to certain individuals. And at the end of it, what came out of it? That is what we are getting. After how many years now? That those. Um, this goes we are bored and so to rich rich men we have not been able to transit from 4,000 megawatts to 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000 as supposed to all we continue to do is to be continue to pay for inefficiency of most of these discos and then um, they ask you to pay for uh, electricity that you don't you are not getting 
they put you in band one, band two, band three, band three, and rest of them. But nothing improves. At the end of it, you come to pay, you realize that you pay for what you are not consuming. They give Nigerians, they don't meet up, they don't meet up, homes. Most Nigerians are not estimated this because that's where they make their money. So, selling this again, I don't, it's neither here nor there for me. What we need to do is to have a due diligence and we'll see where the problem is coming from. Because that, it's not just about the discourse. There are about three legs to this issue. There's, trans, there's um, generation, uh, there's the transmission, then there's the distribution. The weakest link is the distribution. If at the end of it, we're not able to get it. So even if we said the discourse, what happened to the Jenkos? What happened to the, uh, the, the transmission lines? So it's as good as not doing anything. Because if the, um, we are generating, let me just, as we, let me just assume, we are generating 7,000 uh, megawatts, as it were. And we can only transmit 4,000. So what happens? That means we are wasting 3,000. And by the current situation, this is what we have. The transmission lines cannot take more than uh, 5,000 megawatts. So you cannot even. So what I should be thinking is that we should be looking at the areas of transmission and try to see where we can be able to be able to uh, better the realms as it were. Building capacity, increase our capacity. Look at the transmission. Like most of these uh, lines are there, uh, uh, have been there for since 1960, and we've not been able to change um, the, uh, the the machines or the wires or whatever. Every country have gone tech, high tech. We are still even countries are now using artificial intelligence AI to for transmission of power. We are not even anywhere near. So selling it, I personally believe that if they want to sell it, in the street, you just like they will send it to their cronies who have no capacity, who don't have no they have the work with that to be able to handle issues like this. And at the day, at end of it all is the consumer that still hold the shorter part of the steam. So I would think that it should just be holistic. Rather than just say, oh, I'm going to sell it. We want to sell Akuja. We want to sell uh, the discourse. What of the other uh, value chain within the system? What will you to have? What will happen to them? If you're not able to handle that as well, then you're just, you just a man blinking to the dark. She doesn't know what you're doing. In a short while now, I'm sure that Nigerians will go on Twitter and start to ask the question because uh, we like to ask like that when we hear this kind of news. In the next headline that I'm going to read to you now, we've been asking how much be pure water for your, for your area? How much be this for your area? Now we've heard that uh, uh, Naira rebounds, rice falls to 67,000 Naira in Lagos, Abuja and Chipa at the borders. I don't know whether in Abiokuta is also 60-something thousand. I don't know whether your people in Lagos have told you rice has come down to 67,000. But on the news, it is that it is now 67,000 Naira. Remember that it has gone as high as 90,000. And even in some places, people bought it for 100,000 Naira. So let me hear your comments. They say it's because of the rebounds of, uh, of the Naira, of the, the strength of the Naira now. Did you hear me? Okay, I don't know why. We just uh, lost uh, the visuals and the audio of Chris Wandu. Well, we're hoping that he will rejoin us. But uh, this headline says that uh, Naira rebound, rice falls to 67,000 Naira in Lagos, Abuja, and Chipa at the borders. I, I do not know. I, I would ask you to call in or send us a message via our social media handles and tell us if in your area rice has really come down below 70,000 Naira, which is, uh, according to this report, 67,000 Naira uh, for a bag of 50 kg rice. I started seeing it on Twitter since yesterday, and now it is on the news that the rice is cheaper. Like I asked Chris. Yes, yes Chris, did you hear my yeah, question? Uh, Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask my wife. Maybe she has gone to, to the market of late. Maybe she, she thinks she's in a better position to tell me. The rest that I bought at an entry yes, when I came to her, I bought by yesterday. Um, I believe it's the same portion that I'm uh, selling. And um, we cannot even eat uh, 1,500 naira for, the, for four people like us. 1,500 naira uh, meal or rice and get satisfied. So I don't know where the report is coming from. 
uh, have not done a survey, so I wouldn't know uh, if, that if the service is coming down, how will I? But the fact is that one of the things that tries, we also have to also understand that the Naira is going up against the dollar. As of yesterday, it has been about 1,200 and something. And at the point with other it's going, it's going to come down to um, about 900. Uh, so that since that we are very fast, the central bank told us recently that uh, the Naira is the most best performing currency across the globe in the month of March. It wasn't March of this April. But it seems that we are very fast. But in as much as the dollar is coming now, as we have been saying, that has not reflected in the prices of goods and services, especially food items. Across the board, the price of yam, beans, rice, pepper, uh, tomatoes, and many it is still all oh, it is very, very astronomical and just cannot afford to eat. Most Nigerians cannot eat. They find it difficult to eat. Uh, even um, poultry, poultry products, eggs, uh, chicken, uh, meat is becoming a loss. Uh, you know, in those days when we were in secondary school, when they are given a certain amount to take to school to eat, and they get to the point of it, and you know that you don't have enough for meat, when you get sad, you say, Error, mm -mm. But for those of us that those that grow up in Lagos, when you say, Error, mm -mm, it's just the meat our rice and the meat out of it. It has gotten to a point where they just cannot afford the basics to so well. So, whatever we are doing to get the Naira uh, stretching against the Naira and um, dollar and other international currencies. Let us also to make sure that we go to the group but and make sure that the prices of food items, especially food items, I'm not even talking about housing and other food, but food items is marginally enough for an average night. Like I don't know. Did it also excite you because you mentioned it here when they said that the Naira was the best performing currency and everybody was clapping that we're doing so well. The Naira is the best uh, performing currency in the world. Did it also excite you the way it excited some people in some quarters? It did not excite me how much was Naira pre-20, May 29th, um, 2023. The Naira was just, at the black uh, market was just about 700. So until we come down to that level, it's not a site, not going to a site. Mm. But it's, when you look at this, uh, this are bits where it go to almost 1,900. But imagine you say that there's a pattern in the I don't know what the central bank, a lot of people are saying that, oh, they are pushing too much dollars into the market. And if we continue to do that, it will, it will get a time that it will cost. What we need to do is to increase our capacity to production and export. If we're not able to export and not be able to bring in um, uh, uh, enough dollars or foreign currency, then we're going to go back to where we are coming from. Yes, I know that um, through the central bank policies, a lot of, uh, 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 what do you call it, now, Nigeria state is living abroad and sending back money um, to the country. Um, that policy is, is attracting a lot of for, uh, Nigerians uh, abroad because they are going to make so much from what it has. So that I had is part of what has shut up the uh, liquidity within the system and bringing down the, um, the Naira as against the dollar. But the ultimate aim is for us to be able to look at the production lines and make sure that we export more. Look at our crude. Are we meeting our uh, OPEC quota? Quota uh, when it, it comes to um, the crude oil. I also, I was also looking at other areas like agriculture, technology, mining, and the rest, where we can be able to export more and earn more uh, foreign exchange. If we don't do that and just try to manage it, Naira will go with the, the level of liquidity, and then it comes to a point that it's going to bust and we are going to go back from where we are. But for now, marginally, I think we are not doing bad. Right. When people are clapping, are clapping, I say, where was it? Pre May 29. 2023. That is the benchmark of it. Yeah, uh, I also, I, I also, um, I'm on that page. Uh, it's like having a child that is uh, uh, always in the first uh, uh, three positions in the class, and this child begins to fail, and he is uh, 40 out of 41, and then suddenly, because of one or two things, the child becomes a uh, 30th position takes the 30th position. Are you expecting me to go to the PTA and start to clap and say that my child is doing so well because someone s told me that he, he is the most improved child? I will not clap until he becomes or he comes back to where he was uh, before that fall. 
Okay, but um, we move to The Guardian. While The Point was uh, taking a story or gave us a headline about rice coming down to 67,000 naira, on The Guardian we see cooking gas price spikes further as Nigerians struggle with food inflation. So it just confirms that the food inflation is still very biting and now cooking gas price has gone up. Your comments. Yeah, you know what I said. That, that's what I said. As much as when they are clapping and um, the little government's uh, policies on the Naira are against the dollar, the fact is that the food prices are still skyrocketing. And that's the one that concerns Nigeria. How many Nigerians use this dollar? How many Nigerians? You know, that's what I was saying one day when we were talking about the issue of um, uh, dollar. We we're talking about this issue of dollar. And I said, an average Nigeria is not interested in dollar. What is interested? In how to put food on his table, and we say, oh, the going down of the dollar is going to affect the prices of food. I say, no, it not, do not, uh, because these are two different things. We are talking about uh, machinery then and rest of them. I said, the basic thing that was the fundamentals. One of the fundamentals is that most people are not going back to the farm. People are not farming because of insecurity, and to be able to secure the farm for people to go to farm and farm. Then that because uh, that that will remain a problem. Two is also transportation. The prices of the cost of transporting these food uh, items from the rural areas to urban areas is too high. How much is a, this this big truck that brings them? How much is it? How much is fuel? Um, it was increased by about 300 percent. Those are having factors. Those are basic factors. What of the roads? How was the state of the road? And so many other things. And is it is a chain. So if one affects the other, and that is what happens. So what we need to do is uh, to secure some level of food security for any country that cannot be able to feed its people, cannot be said to be a viable nation. And that is the fact, because food security is key, and it's tied to so many other things. So for you able to, you saw at a point, Ukraine was giving us grain and rice or whatever they were giving us, and that is a country at war. So we should be able to feed ourselves and even have more export. We have the capacity, we have the land, we have all the, um, the things God has given us. It is not too possible to plan properly and use our initiative to make sure that our people don't go hungry. Over 230 million people. Look at the poverty line. How many who are uh, under the poverty line? Who are close to about it? How, how many was it the last time? Uh, the MBS um, released their report and the United Nations released their report on the poverty line within Nigeria. It is very, very one of the highest in the world. So those are the issues that we're looking at. And that is where I think our government should focus on. Making sure that they can be able to, an average Nigeria can be able to feed themselves. So we're not even talking about that at the minute. We're not talking about electricity yet because electricity seems to be for a certain set of people in the world. I don't think Nigerians are part of that set. Um, because an average Nigeria is a local government to itself. Nigeria provides its own light. Um, they practically tie uh, his road, uh, provide water for himself, goes as far as providing security. And that is all. It's more of a local government. Of, uh, Nigeria is a local government. They ask why is the place of the government in all this? For us to be able to have a sustainable life, especially for our cities, the basic necessities of life must be provided for the average Nigeria. Starting with food, clothing, housing, and education, health. And so why most of our people are traveling and going out of Japan right? is because they can't get these basic things. Those are the basic things they get wherever they are going to. It's not like they are going there to become rich, but they also want to have the basic necessities of life, which is given in most countries. There are certain things that you don't even talk about that are already given. And you see our people here, even though they are working, they think that are having the best of life in certain companies or banks and rest of them, still resigning and going out because they want to have a better life, not only for themselves, but also for their children. Mm. Okay, um, before we go into politics, uh, let's take this on. Government considers 18 as minimum age for admission seekers. They're saying before you can enter into any tertiary institution, you have to attend the age of 18. Uh, what do you think about that? But it has already been there. So I don't know where that is coming from. For you to go into a get admission to a federal university, a state of state of federal university, you must plug the age of 18. I have so that is basically uh, except for the five great universities, but that is not even for me. I don't personally, personal, my personal opinion is neither here nor there. Most countries of the world are having their children entry university at 14, 15, 16. 
is a, a, is a question of how we develop. But yes, I know that uh, it's of a necessity that a child must mentally uh, develop to be able to enter university. I've seen children, I've seen children that went to universities at um, at that young age. I, I uh, and uh, I came back with, with all due respect, uh, with all sense of humility. My daughter got admission into university at the age of 16, and she went in. And four years after, she came out with a first class in computer science. So, at, at 20, she was a graduate, and she had a first class, and she had just finished her, her master's also where she had a distinction. So, it's not just a, a question of um, saying that we pay gifts, whatever it is in their heart, all well and good. But the fact is that whether it's 16, whether it's 17, whether it's 18, what is most important to me is that are we providing necessary investors to the university to be able to take care of these children? Are we, are we paying the teachers enough? Are you providing the necessary accommodation, the necessary facilities, the necessary infrastructure for the schools to develop? On a daily basis, we see us going on strike, we see NASU going on strike, we see other unions within the universities going on strike. Those are areas of more importance to me than saying the average. Most countries of the world are moving ahead. Their children are into AI, they are into robotics and other things. And most of these children, they, they even enter, there are some gifted children. There, are some, there was a time in this country where I have the school for the gifted. But the news I had some few, I read some few days like that. Those schools are so disabled that nobody's going there. There are children that are specially gifted. And what they do is in Nigeria, we should them to pick them set an example and keep them in this particular school, secondary school as it were, so that we develop their capacity. But now, all is in shambles. I think if the Federal Ministry of Health, uh, Education should be much, much interested in building capacities in these institutions, like rather than looking at, yes, for me, I should be the, the cutoff point should be about 16 years. Yes, we'll leave it at 16. And if we able to, a child that graduates at 20, he's not doing badly. At 21, he's not doing badly. Look at it, even we are saying 18, but the child, a child goes to school from 18 and they come out and um, graduate at 22. Comes out doing the NYC 23. The next six, seven years, he will not be able to get a job and he will be hitting 30. What are we going to be able to provide job for the job, these young ones that are coming out of school to be able to uh, uh, practically get engaged? That should be should be the narration and not just the short age or no It's neither here nor there. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, let's move to politics now. And um, the interesting state now is um, River State. Uh, uh, controversy trails River's uh, politics as lawmakers override Fubara's accent past local government authority bill. Uh, we see that this is like the sixth time that they are overriding the governor, Fubara. Uh, I would think that it depends on, I don't know what time, have to, what time we have, but that I've linked to uh, two of the headlines together. But let me, let's start with Fubara. Uh, I've said this time and time again that as far as I'm concerned, Fubara is uh, it's just a book bet that I just put there that people will use. You know, when you call what we call ping pong, you know that ping pong, use uh, what, we, what we call ping pong in uh, or chess. Uh, it's just uh, looking on the chess board. Uh, the king and the queen is somewhere in Abuja, and he determines what. We thought that uh, Fubara would have used the opportunity he had when the 25 or 27 lawmakers from PDP parted or decamped on ceremoniously to APC, which was unconstitutional. We thought that we would have followed it to the letter. But he went to the Abuja and was um, uh, and went into a signing an agreement that puts him at a very, very dis serious disadvantage. He came back as I sing his different tunes. Now he's reaping the reward of what he has done. So, all well and good. Whatever he gets, he should get. Um, yes, constitutionally, the, the House of Assembly had the right to override um, the governor. After if a law is passed and passed on to him for a certain period, uh, he does not assent to it. He comes back to the, the assembly. Even at the national level, the National Assembly has a right to override the president when it comes to the issue of bills uh, that was passed by the, by the legislative arm. If after some time was able to do that, and I saw that happen some time ago, I can't remember under which way. I think it was under one of the or whatever. But the fact remains that it's provided him on a cake of powder, and it is his, his own making. Until he rises up and becomes a man of his own, all this rhetoric that is talking here from both the side of the land will not favor him. And it's just a question of time. Before he may be, I say maybe, I didn't say we, uh, 
So in law, we say shall, but I'm not using that word for him. But if he doesn't take his time, it's just a question of time. Look at even most of the commissioner. The other day, a commissioner within his cabinet was opposing him uh, 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 to a press statement. A, a, a commissioner under you as a government was opposing him and saying all sorts of things against him. That of the local government a chairman also the same. It's so obvious that the man doesn't want to be a man of himself. He has not learned any lessons. If he wants to learn, he should go and take lessons from people like uh, Obaseke of uh, Edo State and some other governors who were able to face the, their problems squarely, look at their so called godfathers in the eyes and were able to interpret them. But by, because by liberating them, they could be the speed. But if you want to continue to draw this line, then all well and good. Then the second one is that the issue of the police, and we are sure that that's supposed to be a major. Um, headline for us. Um, uh, we had a national dialogue on said yesterday, and the high point of it was we had the Inspector General of Police, um, Tabo Ebeto, who said that he opposed the police, opposed the uh, state police, and he gave his reason for it, which to me believe, was so self centered and selfish. Because if you say, oh, the governors are going to hijack it, we are not matured for state police. Presently, I think the governor is not hijacking it. Just say two days ago, he was in a paper that, but a few days ago, he was in a paper that to commission some police uh, even deal. And at that point, the government of the, of the state donated to the seven vehicles to the Nigerian police. That is what is happening across the, the country. Governors are practically taking over the um, funding of police and being able to uh, hand over vehicles and other logistics for them. It is not left to the federal government. So the, government, the state government already. And you ask yourself, what is the what we what's the number of Niger police? What's the scenario? Let me say what's the scenario where I'm five hundred thousand policemen across Nigeria. Out of that five hundred thousand, over thirty percent have been taken up and given to VIP. So we just about seventy percent of them will the guy um, um, police in Nigeria. A country of two hundred about two hundred million, less than five hundred thousand. So what are we talking about? You see the life, high level of insecurity. So I should think that you should be able to give that. But the funniest part of it is that why did the uh, Inspector General of Police was opposing it? The Minister of Police appears supported the GSTP. So to me, that's ironic. And most of the speakers that spoke at the forum, including the uh, former president, the former president, and even the current vice president, practically everybody was saying that this is going to go. So the IG seems to be the only one. He has gone further to say that they should even match the federal safety and the SCDC. Can you imagine that? You're all the way you're having your campaign managed. You are talking of Imagine another agencies of government that are practically doing very well to yours. Can you be able to manage that? So I just see it as a being just self centered. But that is not the way Nigeria is. Nigeria is one state police. For us to police, to police, to police, to police Nigerian properly as it's well. There's a high level of insecurity. Which police in North cannot be able to handle. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this is where we'll drop it today, Chris. Uh, we'd like to thank you very much for your thoughts uh, on the matters raised on the pages of the newspaper this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, have a wonderful day ahead. You too. Uh, we've been talking with Chris Kindewandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He is, uh, uh, well, he was talking to us this morning from Abiokuta. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll go straight to our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>